Hey guys, are you ready for more dumb ass chess? We've looked at lots of dumb ass openings previously, and today I have to share with you two dumb ass end games. Um, if you are looking for inspiration of how you can snatch defeat from the jaws of victory and throw away perfectly good, completely won positions, you're in the right place. So I've got two games to share with you. I've played two games this morning. Um, mixed results, but let's go through game number one. So we'll go through quite quickly and we'll get to the end game, the critical kind of position. So this is in the French. I think they're both French actually, which turns into a kind of Sicilian. When the knight comes out here, you need to play c5 and then bring the knight out behind. So it's more Sicilian now. So it's like an open Sicilian, eh? Okay, takes, takes, knight out. Doesn't make sense for white to take here. So I just capture again inwards and have a big pawn majority um, in the middle. So bishop comes out, pin the knight. Bishop comes out, and now I double white's pawns here. Um, which is a slight advantage for me. And now a6, so I'm, I might be thinking about b5 and try and kick that bishop away, make life difficult. Um, come around here, attack the bishop. Bishop retreats, bring out my other knight, now attacking a loose pawn here. And bishop now out to e5, that's an undefended knight. So I defend it by pushing d6, and we have f3. And now I retreat my knight, but this is a... We have a problem here. So tactically, <clears throat> didn't need to retreat my knight. So now we've got a face off between these two knights. However, what you have to notice is that if these two knights were removed from the board, there is an overwhelm against one of black's pieces. Okay, so I mean, the, the idea here, right, is move the knight, push e5 with a pawn fork on bishop and knight, yeah? Seems to make sense, but I didn't think it through. Because if knight takes and pawn takes, look at this guy. One defender, two attackers, and now a bishop on d6 is stopping me from castling because it's covering that square. Right, very unpleasant. Okay, so I bring my bishop off the back rank, defend that pawn, bishop retreats slightly, and now knight comes round to harass the bishop who just drops back to a3. But that allows me then to play c5, defended by the knight, and now I am going to be able to castle. c4 is played, castles. Okay, so right now I'm a, I'm a pawn down, but in reality, the only difference is he's got an extra c-pawn, but it's a doubled and isolated c-pawn, so it doesn't really make much difference. In actual fact, these two pawns together could prov prove to be more of a, um, a blockade to his bishops, um, and less of a problem for my knight. So a5, now c3, and a4 hitting this light squared bishop. Because I don't want this bishop to have you know, space on this side of the board. He's got all these light squared pawns on this side of the board. So if he's behind that wall, he's not going to cause me too many problems. Okay, so bishop there. I think an idea here even could have been to push pawns up and blockade this. But Okay, so now I move my knight and I'm hitting this pawn here. And there's a face off between the queens. So white decides to trade queens, he's slightly up in material, and then grab this bishop, sorry, grab that pawn, I grab a pawn, knight, uh, rook comes across to attack the bishop, bishop moves, okay. Rook comes down hitting knight and pawn, and I pivot round now, counter-attacking this bishop. So yeah, he could grab a pawn, but you're not gonna do that and lose a bishop. So counter-attacks make sense when you're attacking a piece of greater value. So now the rook comes back, to, um, oh yeah, of course. So this is actually a double attack. So attacking the bishop here and a discovery on the rook. So the rook, rook c1 is really the only move. And now I come back again to attack another piece of higher value than this pawn. I attack the dark squared bishop. Dark squared bishop moves. And now I can move my knight away. And now if they take the pawn, I can grab the bishop. So 
Rook takes pawn. I capture bishop. Okay, so I'm still just a pawn down. Uh, two pawns down at this point, actually. But uh, after this recapture. Okay, so recaptures. And now rook takes. Okay. And this is now a problem because that's what I spotted, right? Attacking the pinned piece. And the key thing here is that this rook is undefended. If that rook had been defended, it wouldn't be an issue. But right now, this king is far too far away from that bishop to be able to offer any assistance. Should the bishop move, I grab the rook, winning position. Okay. Um, should the rook move anywhere, I grab the bishop. So, should be well up. So, king moves, I grab the bishop with my rook, and we have an exchange here. Now, this should now be a totally winning position for black. Okay, now, I have an extra bishop. These pawns are pretty much equal there on the king side. I have an extra bishop. White has two extra pawns. Now, this is the point in the game where, unless you're playing in the true dumbass spirit, which of course I was here, um, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, what has to happen in order for white to win the game? What has to happen in order for black to win the game? So in order for white to win, win the game, this pawn is not going to do it. Okay, My king is too close, right? And if this pawn tries to advance, I can capture it. Okay, So I can stop that pawn, right? This is the danger pawn. Now, this pawn has got to go one, two, three, four, five, six jumps in order to queen. Now, if you look at this square that the pawn is in, it's actually this square, and my king is in the square. So my king could actually one, two, three, four, five, or five, yeah, and stop the pawn, right? That's one way of winning the game, right? Um, another way, potentially, is if the pawn goes here, I snipe it with the bishop. Now, would you like to see how I managed to throw away this one position, okay? King starts to come in. My king comes across. So far, so good. Tax the bishop. Bishop moves. Comes closer again. I bring my king in. Comes closer again. Drop my bishop back to d1. All right. So now I'm thinking, right, should this pawn land on one of my light squares? I'm thinking I could sack the bishop in order to eliminate this pawn. And then if my king suddenly has the inside you know, line here, I could grab this pawn and be in a winning position. However, that's not how it turns out. Pawn comes down. Yeah, fair enough. I bring my king across. Right. King comes down. So this, this king is doing a good job. It wants to get to here and, and then shepherd the pawn. Right. Now, for my bishop here. So I play my king to here. I think this is this is a mistake, right? Now, can you see another winning endgame strategy here for black? Okay, and it all comes down to counting, really. So this pawn has got one, two, three, four. And um, then you have to realize that the promotion square is what? It's a light coloured square. Okay, now, in four moves, what can I do? Well, how about this? One, two, three, four. And I've et all white's pawns, right? Giving myself a four on two majority on the king side. And then one, two, three, four. Then bishop, bang, the queen is gone. Okay, and I've got four on two, and I just walk it in from that point. For some reason, I decided to be a complete dumbass. And I didn't do that. And this is what happened. So I compete with the pawn here. Clearly, this pawn isn't going to want to uh, trade off or anything. It's like d5 just completely locks me out the game. I push another pawn. He pushes. And then f5. And I mean, it's not, this is still losable by white, 
but um, quite honestly, so we, we lock up the pawns on the side there, and then I'm just in the case of Zugzwang, which is, um, you know, where, where you really just don't want to have to move, but you have to move. Right, it's a case of, I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. Okay, and we, we have some dancing around, but now, you see, I can't go here, or here, or here. So I have to retreat my king, and he gets opposition there, and yeah, I push a pawn trying to, but this is, you know, completely lost, right? So I've gone from a, a totally one bit, all I needed to do was sit down and calculate and figure it out, but I was too much of a dumbass. First game I played this morning, coffee's not kicked in, just doesn't work. All right, are you ready for game number two? Which is just as appalling, okay. So now I'm playing at, again, somebody rated 1222. I'm only just over 1400 at this point in time. Um, again, we have the French. And this is much more standard. Okay, knight comes out. C5 is the first pawn break. And I'm allowed to capture on there. So now, now I have a, the pawn majority here now. This is actually, the game is almost decided by a, a mouse slip or a finger slip. Okay, this is all very standard French stuff. So. Here, I've got now queen and knight, looking at that knight on d4. So the bishop comes out to defend. And clearly, I don't want to have issues of knight takes knight with a discovery against the queen or anything like that, or knight takes here. So I need to get my queen out of line of that potential discovered attack. a3, bishop out. Okay, so we're lining up here against h2, but white spots it, which is good and pushes g3. Now what this does do is weaken the light squares around the king. So now I'm thinking of switching tack from queen and dark squared bishop to queen and light squared bishop, maybe being my primary attacking idea. But let's carry on and uh, complete development first. Knight comes out and we have, yeah, black castles. Knight moves to a position where it's completely undefended and hanging, so I grab it. All right, now I'm now a pawn, so I'm now a full minor piece up. Grabs a pawn, trade off some more material, why not? Centralize the bishop, and now I'm in a very comfortable situation, right? We have this slight weakness around the king, and I'm a full knight in front for a pawn, okay? Queen retreats, centralize the rook, so now I've got ideas of grab a pawn with a discovery against the queen. Queen moves out of line with that, so again, well done to my opponent. A6 kicks the bishop, and we trade off light squared bishops, right? It's not ideal. I mean, that was probably my better bishop because of this. However, I figure it should now be a walk in here. Uh, knight moves to, with a double attack on the queen, we trade queens. So what's not to like, okay? Bishop comes down to hit the rook. I don't have to respond to that right now because I actually have a check with a fork on the rook, king moves, I capture it again with check. So why rook didn't capture there, I don't know. And now I can grab c2 and also counterattack the rook. So this is poor play here from white. Um, I'm now eight material points up. Now I move again with check because the, you know, I've got two pieces under attack here. Rook's attacking that. And attacking that, so um, I want to I want to save my rook. Clearly, I can I can give up my knight. I'm a full um, rook in front then, and that's totally winning. So e3 <clears throat> check, bishop takes, which is, which is better than pawn takes because pawn takes would have isolated that pawn. Okay, now I move my rook across to defend the bishop. Rook e8 pins the bishop. King moves, and this was my. Fingerslit. I don't know what I was doing. Um, so I'm playing on the tablet and I've got confirm each move actually switched on in the options, right? I don't know what happened. My finger brushed it, the thing there, and then I touched the confirm move. My opponent went bang. So I, I then say, oh, that was a, that was a slip. Um, but now suddenly material is completely equal, okay? My opponent's got 16 minutes left on the clock. This is actually a 15-10 uh, rapid game, and it's just going horribly wrong. Okay, so King comes across here to defend the Rook. 
<clears throat> bishop checks, bishop blocks. And now, I mean, the, the, the threat is black taking the bishop, uh, taking the rook. So we have bishop, exchange of bishops and exchange of rooks. Now, very, very, very balanced position. King comes in, king comes in, right? Now, the slight difference here is that white's got one more advanced pawn, okay? But also, if you notice, the king is in the center and my king is two moves away from the center, okay? So white here is on the front foot. White grabs opposition, very important. That means my king cannot progress. I cannot move forward because all these three squares are guarded by that king, okay? So I push a pawn for want of a better idea. White pushes a pawn, we push pawns. I know that it's generally a good idea to have my pawns fairly flat. I move my king to one side. I figure if he goes here, I can move back. You know, so, and that square is covered now by the pawn. That square is covered by the pawn. He pushes a pawn, I take opposition. He pushes a pawn, I push a pawn. He pushes a pawn, I push a pawn. We have an exchange of pawns, okay? And now, 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 now. I mean, this is balanced, fairly balanced. However, my pawns are here on the really third and fourth. All of White's pawns are on the fourth. Okay, so he has a slight advantage. If it comes to a foot race, he's got one step advantage, right? He has the initiative there. Now, this is a mistake, but it's still a winning position actually for White. So I capture here. Now, what do you have to do here as White? I remember this is a 1200 player um, so, you know, I was expecting not to be as sharp in the ending. Um, but there is only one move really here, which is H takes G5. H takes G5. If we swap off, then we've got a, yeah, still a fairly balanced situation, but um, should be better for white being more advanced, okay? Um... So white's going to, you know, we come across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight moves to promote. And I would be what, let's say, so if he comes across one, so hang on, we've, so we've got a white pawn on here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight also. So yeah, very tentative there. However, white captures with the F pawn, which is a blunder. In the true spirit of dumbass, he manages to <clears throat> convert a one position into something very, very dubious. Now, so clearly I can now advance the F pawn. King comes across, opposition, right? King now can't come to here, or here, or here, or here, okay? So what does he do? Moves back there, opposition. Opposition, right? Now he retreats and I push up. Now he goes up here and what do I do? Opposition. I stop him from being able to advance towards my pawn. King comes across, push the pawn. Now he pushes the H pawn, I capture. We have the G pawn starting to make a run for it and we have a trade, okay? So now I have an extra pass pawn on the H file and again, coming back to this thing, if it's life or death, what has to happen for black to win, or what has to happen for white to win? Now for white to win, he's got to eliminate this pawn. Right? He simply doesn't have time to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because I'm only one, two, three, four steps away from promotion. So what can he do? And remember now, he can't go on that square because of the pawn. So he has to retreat. And I take opposition. And he comes there, and I push the pawn. And he has to retreat, okay? And I push the king. And again, and now, I'm thinking, whatever it takes, he's got, he's got to capture that pawn, right? So I've got plenty of time to mosey over this side of the board, grab the other pawn, and then take opposition there. Critical, critical square. Okay, 
<clears throat> and now the king moves here. And what is the right move now? There's actually, there's actually, no, there, I think there is one, one best move now to assure victory, right? And it's king b2. It's so tempting when you're in situations like this to, to start creeping the pawn up, you know, in your excitement to get a queen. But let's say pawn here, king here, pawn here, king here. You could find yourself stuck, right? Now with king to b2 there, taking the opposition, okay, look how far this king has to travel. One, two, three, because it can't go there, four. It would take the king four moves to capture the pawn. And in that time, bang, 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 bang. Right, pawn converts. This pawn is not in any danger whatsoever. It only has to get into this safe zone, and it's only two steps away from getting into the safe zone that's protected by the king. Okay, so now we have, and then it's just a, a fairly standard um, walk in, queen to here. So this this is a, this is a, a decent move. So I've got my king in the opposition um, position. Right, I'm all I'm waiting for is for the white's king now to move into opposition and then queen here or queen anywhere on the back rank, provided it can't be captured, and that's checkmate because the king is covering the square. So this is a situation where I want my opponent's king to take opposition, okay? But so this, but this move here with a queen means the king is left with only one legal move, which is there, and then straightforward checkmate. So there you go, um, again, just completely thrown endgame, um, and it, it goes to show how it's so easy to you, know, you put all this work into into a game of chess, and then you just completely bollocks up the endgame because you rush. I mean, this this lesson this lesson was okay. Sorry, this this game was okay. This one, um, you know. I, 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 it, it's forgivable for my opponent to maybe to mess up that that situation is you know which pawn to take that kind of thing you know at 1200 that's understandable this i mean how long would it have taken me i mean it's counting i've got enough thing i'd only need to use one hand for this bugger right one two three four five hang on yeah, from here, from here, okay? So it's, instead of that, there, 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 grabbed another pawn, there, there, grabbed another pawn, and I am covering the promotion square, right? Walk in the park, mate. And look what happens. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyway, so there you go. Hope you've um, enjoyed that. I hope you've picked up one or two points as well from uh, these absolutely disastrous dumbass endgames. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Please leave a comment. Please subscribe. I'll see you soon.